Welcome to The Table Podcast, where we discuss issues of God and culture, brought to you by Dallas Theological Seminary. Now, a lot of people have a judgment about blended families, Mm -hmm. and it's that somehow they're all born out of sin. Mm -hmm. Some of them are, Mm -hmm. okay? Clearly, some of them are. Right. Not this one. Mm -hmm. And it's still complicated. Mm -hmm. It's still a challenge. You still need direction specific to your family situation. To just walk in and say, okay, uh, ma'am, you're now the woman of this house. Be a mom. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. How does she be a mom to girls that don't accept her presence? She can't just put on the mom hat and be the mom. How can she be a mom to to uh, to an older brother who's in his twenties in law school, has his own life, and he hasn't really had a mom for eight years? She she could be the mom to you. By the yeah. way, she's got three kids of her own. She's still trying to be the mom too. What That's does that right. look like? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so there's so many layers to mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. Complexity is the middle name of the step family, mm-hmm. and we have to do, I think, in ministry, uh, our our due diligence. To understand it, you don't have to be an expert in the in the, but you have to understand it. You have to at least kind of get it from the outside, mm-hmm. so that you can then point to resources, help people in a moment where they just need to sit down and have some hope brought to them. But if we're not willing to do that, then we just stay irrelevant. Mm-hmm. Uh, just the other day, uh, how many step families are in the church? I, yeah, we can talk about step families in our culture. There's a mm-hmm. hundred million. Let's do that for a minute. Okay. There's a hundred million people in the United States with a step relationship. That's what thirty three percent. It is a third of Americans yeah. that, who can touch it. Meaning, right. I say above, beside, or below. They have a step yeah. parent. They have a step sibling, or they have a step child. Okay. Hundred million. Okay, that does not count the people that are grandmas or grandpas who have a son who's just married a woman with two mm-hmm. kids and he became a stepdad and grandma's trying to figure out how to help her son, mm-hmm. right? She just wants to bless them and mm-hmm. how do I do that? It doesn't count those people. So real fast, this is a lot of people we're talking about. This is not a niche ministry. No, it's, 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 <laughs> this, is, this is a whole section of your church. <laughs> from, from, a, from a household standpoint, mm-hmm. the stats are these, 40% of families, that is, if there's a couple who's married with children in the house, full-time or part-time, mm-hmm. 40% of them are blended families. Hmm. The next question people ask me is, what percentage of people in the church are blended families? And the answer is, we don't know. Mm-hmm. Nobody's ever done the math, hmm. done the science to, to find out. We guess. Now I can tell you that I, you know, I think conservative, conservatively, I, you know, my guess is about a third. Mm-hmm. Depends on what kind of church you're in, what mm-hmm. part of the U.S. you're in. Um, but it's pretty safe to say 20 to 30, 35 uh, percent. I had a conversation with somebody just the other day, a church in a metro Denver area suburb. Um, uh, middle class suburb, and they did the math in their church, and 47 percent of their families are step families. Whoa! So it depends on where you are, but mm-hmm. we could be talking about a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And stop and think about it for a minute. How often do you speak to them mm-hmm. on any level at any place in your church, from the pulpit, in a, in a web page article, in an email? In children's ministry, in youth ministry, in your marriage ministry. With any awareness of what we just spent a half an hour talking about. Do you ever (laughs) speak to any of this? Yeah. My concern is that we're just irrelevant. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and it pains me because I think this is, you know, one of, there's a lot of fields that are white for harvest in mm-hmm. our culture. There really are. Mm-hmm. I think this is one of them, and mm-hmm. I think it's a big one, mm-hmm. and it's a growing field that's white for harvest. And if we just can step in with a word that offers hope and guidance and points them in the right direction, uh, you know, people are thirsty. Yeah, that's a great observation. For help. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it can either be us or it can be the media. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I know what they're going to give them. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, pop answers that aren't going to help at all. So um, let, let's turn – to we've, we've talked about the sociology, we've talked about some of the dynamics, we've talked a little bit about the church. I think the page that I want to turn now, because we've got about 20 minutes left, is is to kind of say, all right, so what, what do you say to families on the one hand? And I think we've covered some of that. Mm-hmm. 
But what do you say to churches on the other? What mm. What's the message for the church? Yeah, in terms of practically in what they can do. In terms of practically do? what they can do, yeah. Well, uh, let, me, let me go down, first of all, the important road, and that is deal with your theological questions around mm-hmm. this, mm. especially re- 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 around divorce and remarriage, mm-hmm. okay? And, um, you know, I've studied it, and, and I know you've read, and there are lots of scholars, and they don't agree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the really smart people don't agree, so we do the best that we can. I do think every church needs to really have a good policy in place mm-hmm. so that whoever's leading the step family group or whatever to whoever's doing the premarital counseling can can be theolog- theologically driven mm-hmm. and understand what um, – what the church is comfortable with and where they need to go and where they don't need to go. So I think that's step one. Step two, then, is to say, okay, where can we begin? And I think there's a lot of really good ways to do this. Mm-hmm. There's so many different entry points. You can just kind of pick the one that makes the most sense to you and start with that. So for example, let's say you have an established parent education training or marriage education a class, workshop, maybe it's an annual conference that you host, whatever that looks like for you. Start with that. So do do what I call sidebars, right? Mm-hmm. You know, talk about marriage and then when you're talking about managing conflict in marriage, you might tell a story about a couple who's managing the conflict around his ex-spouse. Mhm. And how they're going to deal with their co-parenting questions as the children move between homes, because that issue with his ex mm-hmm. is a source of contention in the couple's marriage, mm-hmm. right? And so now you're talking, wow, that's where we live. His ex-wife calls, and our life goes into chaos. Yeah, and that's a whole—I mean, that's a whole dimension we didn't even talk about because it wasn't really applying to the scenario that we that, mm-hmm. that we were in in my family. But when you're dealing with a remarriage that does involve divorce and has ex-spouses and children who have been, who are mixed in two directions, mm-hmm. that's right. Um, uh, if there's a remarriage on the other end, then then we've just multi- We've added a whole other layer to everything mm-hmm. that we were just talking about. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the degree of difficulty, as we like to say at Family Life, has just gone up considerably every yeah. time. And so, yes, there's more and more layers depending upon death or divorce or what the story of the family is. Uh, and so, again, if you do that little sidebar in the middle of a marriage education ministry, you've just taken two minutes, you've told one story, you haven't changed your curriculum, mm-hmm. but you connected to all the couples in that room, mm-hmm. right? You, you did a couple of things. Number mm-hmm. one, you told them, we know you're there, we love you, mm-hmm. and it's okay. We're glad you're here. Mm-hmm. That is huge. Daryl, i got to tell you, couples and step families have so much shame. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's one of the most shame-based groups in our church. Which is why a number of things happen. If you offer a small group, you'll think you'll be flooded with, well, half our church is in a blend. They'll all show up. No. Because they're going to wait and see if you're going to how you're tell gonna them they're going it. to hell, yeah. right? Or, or if, you know how you're going to handle this really matters to them. They've been coming to your church, but they've never told you they were married before, and they're kind of afraid to. Yeah. And so there's there's this marginalization issue. Sometimes mm-hmm. it comes from within them. Sometimes it's imposed by some of the things that we've said or done in the past, and inadvertently, you know, we say things that make people feel less than, and and they just feel unworthy. So that whole issue, I think, is important. I, one of the things I say to churches is you've got to build bridges of grace to them mm-hmm. so they know they can trust to come to you. And here's another layer that I hear. The moment you also share that illustration in the mix of a group that has many couples in it, you're actually sending community vibes at the same time. Mm-hmm. You're not just speaking to that couple. Mm-hmm. You're speaking to everyone in that room that part of our community is made up of people like this mm-hmm. that that are a part of our, our community and our family that we have to be aware of. And you're you're doing some in the midst of having the conversation. You're also doing some educating of yep. everybody else. That's right, which That's is right. important. That's right. And one of the ways you know you get there is if you have a story, you share that. I just mm-hmm. want to commend you for mm-hmm. sharing and talking about your family story. It's mm-hmm. just as simple as that. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, we had a big dialogue and mm-hmm. conversation. That same thing can happen in small groups, couple small groups, marriage education groups, or conferences with two thousand people. Mm-hmm. It's it's another way to open that door, build that bridge of grace, and then then they feel like they can trust you with their story. Mm-hmm. Um, and so premarital counseling is a way. Maybe you're going to do the same premarital counseling you do with a first married couple, but you're going to add a couple of things. You're mm-hmm. going to spend a little time or you're going to ask them to read a book. Hey, let's 
talk about chapter two next week. Read that thing. Let's discuss it. I don't really know what I'm doing, but together we're going to figure this out. That's how you get through it. Mm -hmm. Exposing them to materials and resources is is really helpful. Here's a whole other layer. I, you know, I, I, the more once, you think well, about more it, more I think about it. I mean, it just, uh, uh, the, there's the there's the way in which the original couple related to one another as male and female. Mm -hmm. You got another person in the mix. Yeah. Same gender, different person. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So the rules that you had in your first marriage may not end up being the rules that work in your second marriage. Yeah. Even though you're the same person, the the, the way you interact with the ingredients in the crock pot, if yeah. I can say it that way, that's right. May not may not produce the same chemical reaction. One of the equations I tell couples is yellow plus green equals blue. Mm. Right? But yellow plus red is orange. Right? You still have one color that's consistent, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you, you get a whole new usness mm -hmm. when you add a different color. You, you got to really think about that. And, and again, people who – here's a unique thing. People who have had a bad marriage that ended in divorce mm -hmm. want a very different kind of spouse and marriage. Mm -hmm. People who had a good marriage that ended in death – Want the same thing, and what they don't realize is that you can't they, have either. You can't have either. Yeah, you know, it's always going to be different. Yeah, and and so you go in with this kind of idealistic notion that wow, you know, we got along so well, we talked, we communicated, and you and I, of course, that's the fog of falling in love. Right, right. And then you get to real life, and it's harder, and you're thinking, okay, is there something wrong? And then you add the complexities of you don't get along with my kids and. It's just easy for resentment yeah. to begin to resound on many, many levels. Hmm. If the church is having dialogue, if we're talking about it in small groups or large groups, uh, if we're pointing to resources, ideally, I think every church should have a step family class, mm -hmm. you know, small group, whatever works for your congregation, whatever hmm. the format is that matches your church. That's mm -hmm. what I say you do. Um, just get couples together. Get them talking through some information. There's books. There's videos. You know, 15 years ago, people complained to me constantly there was no resources. Every once in a while, I hear somebody say that today. It's not true anymore. Mm -hmm. There are great Christian resources available mm -hmm. now for step families and for church leaders. And if you get them talking in a group with others who are going through similar sorts of experiences and all of a sudden they're going, oh, that's my life. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it's like in our household. I don't feel so weird anymore. Mm -hmm. I feel like I still belong here. I feel more committed to this church. And I'm getting some practical information that's helping us live. Yeah, some people get this. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I tell people, look, this is not much different than any other ministry we do. We, we need to give them the answers that fit their life and their circumstances, whether recovery ministry. I mean, we do this all the time. Get people together in community and fellowship mm -hmm. around good content and let the church be the church. Mm -hmm. We just have to be the ones to instigate it, make mm -hmm. it happen. So there is the premarital avenue mm -hmm. for uh, impacting somebody's life. There's the marriage ministry avenue that mm -hmm. you can impact. There's the parent education avenue that you might fall into. There's the, okay, we have a special class for step family couples, step couples, I like to call them. Uh, and, and, and it's just for them. And, and we have people in various points of ministry, and we're doing this over here and this over here. Here's another one. Uh, divorce. Recovery ministry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is actually a good place to start planting seeds in people's minds about the complexities of remarriage and step family living. And, you, and it's as simple as, let's say you do divorce care, you know, you have 13 video sessions, and at the end of the last night, you take 10 minutes. You hand out an article I wrote called 10 Things to Know Before You Remarry, right? Mm -hmm. And it's free, and people can download it off the web. And you hand it out, and you go, hey, we know you guys are not dating. Some of them are. And <laughs> we, we wish they weren't, but they already are. Yeah, that's right. And, and someday, you might just find yourself in a new relationship, and we just want you to know there's some differences about that. So here's this article to read, and God bless. Right? And they're looking at you like, that is crazy. I'm never going to fall in love ever again. I'm not going to go through that pain or that heartbreak. And two years later, they're looking up your phone number because they can't remember what you said, but they know you said something about this being different, and they've begun to f sense that. Mm -hmm. And now they're thinking about getting married, and they've got kids, and all this is coming back. And now they want to know what you have to offer, and you plug them into a class or you hand them a – the whole point is just reach people wherever you are, know they are there also. Mm-hmm. Find a way to try to talk to them, even if it's just a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
And there's a whole dimension of this that we haven't talked about yet that I think is interesting and has some potential too. You know, a lot of times when you preach on a Sunday and you're preaching a message, you talk about the family mm-hmm. and family dynamics and that kind of thing. But but I, I, I'm going I'm to propose something here that I think often goes on that we that walks into this area and that is but I think I think we tend to do it in a leave it to beaver mode yeah. okay yeah. and what I mean by that and I'm sorry for the young people who didn't get that <laughs> illustration but the point is you know here here here's the cleaver family and the, you know you got the it's the one family with the two boys mm-hmm. and and it's and it's the it's the ideal family picture mm-hmm. You know, and we preach out of that mode, or we talk about relationships in the context of the of the sing, single marriage, if right. I can say it that way. Um, and as you've already pointed out, maybe a third of my audience isn't even there. Right, they're somewhere else. They're in a different reality. And the more I consistently preach only out of that one lens. And I never go to the other place, mm-hmm. the more dislocated yep. a significant portion of my audience feels. Now, let's talk about attention okay. that, that exists in this, okay? okay? Because we're the people who preach the ideal. Right. And we should. Yeah. Okay? I right. am a right. number one believer mm-hmm. that we got to teach God's blueprints for the family better, stronger, louder, f- harder than we ever have in the past because mm-hmm. we are moving further and further away from it. The pressures Secular are all pulling you in different directions. All, within the secular society yep. and even yep. within our church family. So we have to do that. And we have to then live with that tension of saying, and and yet if this isn't you, you know, that's really the redemptive. I mean, isn't this what it's all about? Well, the, fa- the fact is, is that we preach in a fallen world. Yeah. Uh, and the gospel operates in a fallen world. Mm-hmm. Grace manifests itself in a fallen world. Nobody would be in the church if there wasn't sin. Right? Exactly Everybody right. Everybody there is imperfect. That's right. So, so in the midst of doing that, it seems to me it's incumbent to to use the term you used earlier in a message, perhaps now and again, to have a sidebar. Mm-hmm. That communicates. I know that this hasn't been the experience of everyone, and some of you find yourself in this place. Now, yeah. what's the best way to operate biblically if this is where you find yourself, mm-hmm. and you're off and running? And in the process, we're back to the things we talked about earlier. Not only have I connected with a portion of the audience that up to this point I haven't been connecting to, perhaps making them feel a little more marginalized in the process, but I'm also educating my entire community about the kind of community they're living in. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It, it, we're helping all of us to become more relevant to our friends and our neighbors and the people that are around us. And so it, it seems to me that this is an incumbent part of reflecting on pastoral ministry as we teach about family. And, and so I take it that <laughs> – kind of come full circle mm-hmm. – that part of the reason you have the job that you do is that the people at Family Life realize this. Yeah, you know, they, exactly they basically right. dawned on them, here's a whole portion of our community who are attempting to minister about families and where they are and help them cope with where that where God has them and there's a whole segment of the population that we've completely bypassed. And let me tell you, we live in this tension all the time. We we have to walk the line, I think, mm. at Family Life and within the church local ministry. This tension of talking about the ideal, talking about God's design and blueprints. We want to move people towards that as mm. whenever we can. Mm-hmm. And at the same time talking about the realities of where we live and what life is like. And honestly, again, Old Testament families <laughs> kind of help us do that. Mm-hmm. You know, it, did Jesus grow up with a stepdad? It, there's one to ponder. Yeah, okay? right, right. I mean, so this whole point of this is not new. Mm-hmm. We just have to bring the wisdom and the truth of Scripture into the realities of where people live. And, and we walk that fine line, and we don't have to apologize for mm-hmm. that. Hmm. That's pretty fascinating. Um, so. So what advice would you give to pastors? I mean, we've, we've sort of overviewed this, but if you were to give specific advice to pastors in particular as they think about this area, what kinds of things would yeah, you be saying? And, and what are you going to be saying to them in the next few days? Students and pastors, uh, I'd say the same thing. Get educated about mm-hmm. it. And let me back up. Mm-hmm. I don't live in a step family. Uh-huh. I don't remember I – don't, I don't think I mentioned that. Yeah. This is not my life. Yeah. I'm 29 years married to the same woman, my first wife. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we always, I always introduce her as my first wife because uh-huh. everybody assumes I'm in a step and family. And you didn't grow up in a step I family. I didn't grow up in one either. Okay. This is not my world. Okay. I have three siblings. They're all in first marriages. My parents are coming up on year 60. Uh, my in-laws have been married 55 years. <laughs> you're, you're, 
you're in I'm the, the wrong fossilized guy. cleaver world. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. I am uh, I tell people I'm the wrong guy, yeah. which which in some ways in God's economy, I guess maybe makes you the right guy, right? Yeah, he uses yeah. you the wrong people. Irony. So you know yeah. it's all about him and that's that's the truth. I really mm-hmm. believe that. Um, and so Pastors sometimes get intimidated, mm-hmm. and they think, "Man, this is not my life. Mm-hmm. I don't get this." They're using words and language, and what is step parenting. What's what's different about that? Okay, read one book. Mm-hmm. Read one book over the next six months. Mm-hmm. Get educated, learn something, have your eyes opened a little bit, and then whenever you have an opportunity, pass along something that you've learned. If it's in premarital counseling with somebody, if it's from the pulpit, it's in teaching, it's in a whatever those opportunities are. You're, you know, got to open those doors and point people towards resources. Get them connected with each other. Hmm. I, I, I will give you this one word of caution mm-hmm. because I think this is important. Because of this shame issue that a lot of blended families deal with, uh, I, I found I've been doing this. Wow, well, I've been working specifically with step families for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. They're the hardest people to get in the room. Hmm. If you offer a class or workshop or a conference, they don't show up in droves because they're not sure they want to go there and be that vulnerable and transparent with their story. It opens up all kinds of pain. It just does. Yeah. It does. It really does. And so understandably so, mm-hmm. they're tough to get in the room. Mm-hmm. But once you get them there, they bond faster than anything you've ever seen. Mm. They finally found somebody who has a similar story to them, and they can be honest about it and open about it, and together we're figuring this out with God's grace, mm. and we're feeling rooted in our church and supported by our church, and it is fun mm. to watch. Mm. So there's challenges, and there's incredible opportunities, mm. and I really believe that we can make a difference. Um, so. Find opportunities to get them connected to each other. Marriage mentors. You know, it's another great ministry that, mm-hmm. that's on the rise in our culture. Find a step couple hmm. and say, hey, meet with them, have dinner with them once or twice a month hmm. for the next year. Just get them together and talking and show them a few good resources that will really help them. That's one of the things we do at Family Life Blended is try to support those resources um, and let them go. Uh, i, I got to share this one thing with you because okay. I think – I think this is what it's really all about. This is why we're doing what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Two years ago, right here in Dallas, um, we hosted, Family Life hosted our first event called Blended and Blessed, the Summit on Step Family Ministry. Hmm. We do an annual event specifically around step family ministry. Hmm. Um, the next event will be in Irvine, California, in uh, at Mariner's Church this coming November. Hmm. Two years ago, we uh, sponsored our first one here in Dallas. And at that event, I invited a friend of mine, Dr. Francesca Adler-Bader from Auburn University. She runs the National Step Family Resource Center that's based at Auburn. Mm. She runs the National or the Alabama Healthy Marriage Initiative for the state of Alabama. She's mm. a smart cookie, mm-hmm. okay? And she came and she shared something with us that I didn't even know until she said it. Mm. She's followed kids who have grown up in healthy, blended families. And what they found is that those young people have – a more positive view of the institution of marriage as compared to other children of divorce Mm -hmm. have a more positive view. They make better choices about their mate, Mm -hmm. and when they get married, their marriages have a quality that reflects the high-quality step-couple marriage compared to their parental marriage that ended in divorce that led to the step-family in the first place. Mm. In other words... The mitigating factor to take kids from who have experienced breakup and heartbreak and, and, and difficulty and fractured family, the mitigating factor to, to redeem them back towards God's design is the healthy step family. Hmm. Now, an unhealthy step family just adds chaos and confusion and heartbreak and disrupts faith development. All kinds of negativity comes out of it. Hmm. But a healthy step family is the change point, it's the redemption point for the next generation. We can take back first marriage in one generation if we help the step family do well. Hmm. That's good news. That's very good news. That is why we need to be doing this Mm -hmm. and mindful and putting time and energy into it. Because we're not just kind of saying, wow, they messed up and we're just, oh, poor them. Well, let's try to help them out. No, no, no. <laughs> we're offering God's grace. There's a multi-generational impact. Is Absolutely. What you're saying. Yeah. 
and God's grace gets applied and it changes the future. Hmm. So at Family Life, they have you, uh, I, I guess, uh, talking about this, mm -hmm. and this this is what you do. This is what I do full time. Uh -huh. um, I've written five books. Mm -hmm. We have a DVD series for churches. We have another small group study that's available. I was going to ask you about resources, uh, but uh, yeah. that's not all there is. One okay. of the things we're doing through our summit on Step Family Ministry is we're pulling together all anybody around the country who is invested in this area of ministry. We're trying to encourage other ministries to get involved. Focus on the family, for example, mm -hmm. as a partner. Uh, we're helping other smaller ministries that have published study guides and materials to try to help find an audience so that churches can have resources. Hmm. Uh, that's one of the neat things about the summit is that we're all coming together under the same banner. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I think there will be – think about how many books you have on your shelf that are marriage, family, parenting related. Now, how many step family books do you have on your shelf? No, that's true. Okay. Well, soon, we hope, in the coming years, there'll be that many available to you hmm. within the Christian community. Hmm. Well, Ron, I really do appreciate you taking the time to be with us today and kind of walk us through this territory and get us, get us, give us a feel of uh, of what it's like. I think it's been fascinating to think through the really many layers of aspect and then to, and then to, the, the the very differing dynamics mm -hmm. that are in play. Depending on whether you're dealing with a with a, a new family that comes out of a death versus a divorce and that kind of thing, all very very helpful. We wish you all the best in your ministry there at Family Life, and of course uh, the entire ministry there has been a really terrific resource for the church. I I, I do want to close by asking you one question, and that is, what kinds of resources can people get their hands on through through Family Life? Well, we have a video called Ministering to Step Families. Mm -hmm. That's a great starting point for you and for others you want to share it with, get them talking and thinking and understanding the rationale for this, the biblical understanding, theology, all those Could good Could you do questions. a Sunday school class around this kind of material? A absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, well, the ministry to Step Families is for the leaders and okay. leadership. Uh, then we have a book called The Smart Step Family that was my first book mm -hmm. and uh, came out with a revised expanded edition just last year. has a DVD video curriculum that goes with it. Mm -hmm. That's a great, great tool to take couples through to really help them understand what's going on in their life and how to build their life. Then other books in the series, The Smart Step Mom, mm -hmm. Smart Step Dad, both of whom have mm -hmm. discussion questions for stepdads or stepmoms to work through with other in small groups. Uh, Dating and the Single Parent is a resource that's for dating couples hmm. and guides the pastor, gives you some ideas that help them do well through the dating process, involving the kids, making decisions, and how do you move forward, red lights, green lights, yellow hmm. lights. Hmm. And then once you're engaged, what do you do to try to help the family get ready for the wedding? You know, hmm. That's all, dating and the single parent. Hmm. And then the last book that's just coming out uh, next month, as a matter of fact, I got my first copy two days ago, hmm. uh, called The Smart Step Family Marriage. Uh, some of your audience will know David Olson. He's created Prepare and Rich, which is a profile that's used by premarital counselors and therapists all over the world. Uh, David and I did a research study of couples in step families, and we basically fleshed out what the high qualities are of couples that do really well and the, hmm. what predicts poor relationships. Mm -hmm. And we wrote a book that's very practical in nature to try to help couples build that. Comes There's a free PDF study guide that goes along with it. You can get a 13-week Sunday school or small group curriculum out of that. So uh, there's some pretty high caliber kinds of resources, I think, that are available for people turnkey. Um, all our, vid our video resources are all on Right Now Media for those churches mm -hmm. that subscribe to that. We have materials on YouVersion, the Bible app. Mm -hmm. There's a free six-day reading plan on blended families that's hmm. available. Hmm. Uh, FamilyLife.com and my website, SmartStepFamilies.com, collectively have close to 400 articles hmm. for ministry leaders, couples, therapists, all free. Just got to go find it. So you got a whole other series you could do called The Stupid Step Family, What Not to Do. <laughs> no, we want them to be smart. <laughs> so that's great. Well, I really appreciate, again, you coming in and talking with us, and uh, we wish you the best in this ministry, and we just thank you for the for the help that you've given us uh, today. Thanks for having yeah. me. And we thank you for being a part of The Table, and we hope to see you back again soon. Thanks for listening to The Table Podcast. For more podcasts like this one, visit dts.edu slash the table. Join us next week for part two. Dallas Theological Seminary. Teach truth. Love well.